previous lessons, we have been talking about number patterns and most lessons have ended up, or most parts have ended up with something like this. So let's say, and we have been building this thing called a formula for a number pattern. And I want to know quickly, what is that number three in terms of like, this is a formula that describes a number pattern. I want to know what does that three actually do in the number pattern? And I want you to put your answer in the chat. And just think back to the previous time we did this. What does that three actually do? Okay, Vusi Pumuzile has got answers. They say it's the constant difference. Okay, what else did we call it? So that, that's correct. Put your answer in the chat. Okay, step, type, yeah, or the constant difference. It's not the first term, but I'm glad you brought that up. It's not the first term. Okay. Okay, it's, a, it's not a variable. The variable would be the end part over here. Uh, constant difference. Okay, perfect. All right. So I'll explain in a moment what the three is, but the three is essentially going to control how much our um, number pattern goes up by. And we called it the step size, or we can call it the constant difference. Now, if we look at this N over here, what is the N over here? What does that stand for? And I want, again, I want you to put it in the chat. We're going to use the chat. Okay, we could say it's a placeholder. That's one thing we could say, but I used a different word in the previous lessons. Okay, it's not the term number. The term number is the T. Okay, the N is called the position number. Okay, so N is the position number. Now, again, if we, the reason I'm going over this is, so N is the position number. And then the last thing, this thing called TN, what does that stand for? And just give it your best guess in the, in the chat there. So TN, what does that stand for? I'm trying to use pretty colors, guys, but it looks more like a graffiti wall. Okay, yeah. So this is the term value. or Sometimes we say it's the term or the term value. Okay, so... When we talk about the formula, okay, there's one more little part over here. What's this thing? Uh, what color should I use? Yellow. There's a seven over here. Now, the seven, I will give it to you. This is called the constant term. And I sometimes call it the balancing number. So the constant term or the balancing number. The reason it's called the constant term is it's constant. It's just a seven. Whereas this term over here has a variable in it. Now, I've been throwing big words at you. It'll be much better if I show you how this works. So I want to ask you the question, the following question. Using this formula, what is the value of T1? And I want you to put that answer in the chat. So I want everybody to participate. Doesn't matter if you're wrong or right. I just want to get a feel for the group. What is T1 in this number pattern that I haven't even showed you yet? I've just showed you the formula. So T1 is the term value, remember? So T1, it's the first term, yes. What is it the value of the first term using this formula? That's what I want to know. Aha, I see it, Tando. I see it. Okay, I see it. Can you see it? I see it. So T1 is the first term in this number pattern. And so this number pattern is described by this magical thing called the formula. Okay, it's not really magical, but you know, sometimes I feel like it does so much, it must be magical. So what I do is T1 is telling me the one is N, it's the position. And so where there's an N, I'm now going to put a one there. And the relationship here is three times one is three. But then you've got a seven there. And so we say that term one is, has the value 10. And so that's why when I, when I saw someone got 10, I was like, yes, it's 10. 
So I'm using my formula to generate the, the term value, but I put position one in, I put n is one to get the value of 10. Now let's do this again. I want you to work out for me what is the value of term two. And I want you to put it in the chat. Okay, so we go three times by, and let's, I kind of love to use a different color to show you kind of what I'm doing. So I put the two, which is down here, in here. Three times two is six. Six plus seven is 13. Perfect. Okay, now what I really like is I'd like you guys to work out term number three. And I think I'm going to I do. I need to create some more space for myself. Oh, let me see if I can move this around. So while I'm moving things around, can you work out what term three is for me? I might have to write it a bit smaller down here. So T3 is equal to three times three plus seven. So nine plus seven is 16. Okay. So what I wanna point out to you is that we could generate the first three terms of a number pattern using my formula that I did at the beginning. I'm gonna try and, can you make sure everybody can see my original formula? Okay, there it is. So we have the first, if I wrote this out in number pattern notation, I could have written it like this, 10, 13, 16. And we say that this one is, n is one, this one, n is two, this one, n is three, because it's in position one, two, and three. Now, understanding how powerful a formula is to describe a pattern is an important part of this process. So let me give you another one. I want to know now, what is uh, T, I want to know what is T45 in this number pattern? It's the 45th term in the list, T45, yeah. I know I've jumped, I've gone mad now. What is T45? And I remember I've got this original formula that I was using here. I'm even gonna- Guys, please keep yourselves on mute. Yeah, guys, there's some people who aren't on mute. So we've got this formula over here. This was the- beginning thing that I started with and I've challenged you I want you to work out the 45th term in the in the list so all I need to do is go three and this is why formulas are so powerful three times 45 plus seven and so what you're going to get there, be careful, you're going to get, yeah. So three times 45 is 135 plus seven, you get 142. Okay, so this is quite impressive because I didn't have to write out every single number. I could just use the formula. Okay, let me ask you for one more. What is term number seven? Uh, Can you work out term mm -hmm. number seven? And I want you to put it in the chat for this number pattern. Uh, okay, guys, if we can just ask you to stay on mute, I'm going to give you a chance to ask questions now. So how did we find term number seven? We just put seven, the position number in, and you did this. So three times seven is 21 plus seven is 28. So what I wanted to show you was actually, it was, you know, once you have the formula for a number, a pattern, it's actually easy to find out what the 10th or the 50th or the 100th term is just using the formula. And so I hope that I have, um, you know, that process come across relatively easily. Now, I'm gonna ask you something different now. I'm going to change the question slightly. I'm going to ask you, and we, we did this at the end of the last lesson. I'm going to ask you the following. I'm going to say, 
is what uh, what position is the 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 term value um, thirty four in the list? So, if I give you the number thirty four and I tell you it's in the it's in the actual um, number pattern, I want to know what is its position. In the last lesson, I showed you a way of doing this, but there's actually two ways of doing this. Now, the one way of doing it is just to count out manually, which I'm going to do with you now. So watch this. 19, 22, 25, 28, 31, 34. Now, I see some of you are saying you don't understand. Hang on for a second. You'll, you'll see what I mean. I am saying 34 is in my number pattern and I've written it out for you. I want to know what position or what term number is 34. And I'd like you guys to answer me in the chat. Okay, a whole bunch of people are jumping in here with an answer, but I want to give a bit more time. So a lot of people are saying nine and I just want to make sure that we know how we got this. The very first term in my number pattern was 10, which was over here. And if I count from there, I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ooh. And so I think we can say that T9, excuse me guys, is equal to 34 because I've counted out in my number pattern that it's 34. Okay, now I'm gonna show you Pumzila another way of doing it now, which I'm gonna recommend, but I just wanna make sure everybody agrees. So give me a thumbs up if you understand why 34 is T9. And if give me a thumbs down if you're horribly confused, because I need to make sure you understand like where the 34 is involved, because I've, okay. Because I, today I started, the very first thing is I started from a formula. I didn't start from a number pattern. Okay, so there's one or two of you who are feeling a bit unsure. Just hang in there. We're going we're gonna to make the magic happen here. Okay, so if I look, uh, I'm just going to write down my formula again. Tn equals 3n plus 7. So Tn equals 3n plus 7. Everything I've done today has been about this formula. Now, what I said to you was I said, I want to know the position of the value 34 in the number pattern. And what I did was I counted out and I found that the ninth one was its position. But there's another way of doing this that is much easier, especially if you are dealing with big numbers. And that is what I did this at the end of the last lesson. And so I'm going to do this with you now. Instead of counting out and writing everything out, you take the 34 and you put it into this formula. And now you have to make a decision. Do you put it in the position of the TN or the N? And because you are looking to solve for N, N is the position, you need to remember that you put the 34 where the TN is. So 34 is equal to 3n plus 7. Now that, this is something that you need to practice. And the reason okay. why are we plusing with the 7? The formula had a plus 7 to start with. So at the very beginning of the lesson, I started with this pattern. Okay, now, using something called an equation, we are going to try and solve for n. Remember that n is the position number. So what I'm going to do is in order to isolate the 3n, I'm taking away 7 from both sides. If I do that, what do I get? Well, maybe I should even draw in the minus 7 here, or what's called the inverse operation. And then I'm going to get 27 is 3n. Okay, so I took away 7 from both sides. Now, why did I do that? Because I wanted to get rid of the plus 7. Now what I'm going to do is I need to get rid of this three, this pesky three. The inverse operation of this 
is just to divide by three and we get nine is n. And oh my goodness, am I relieved as a math teacher because if I hadn't got nine, there would have been something very wrong with the world. Okay, because earlier in the lesson, you see that n is nine. We said it was the ninth, t9 uh, was 34. It was the ninth item in the list. So this is the, the method I want us to try and get done today is just getting comfortable finding the position number. Okay, so I want to give you a another, I want to give you a bit of practice about this. I'm going to give you another value and you are going to try and find for me the position in the number pattern. Oh. Remembering that if we go back to the very beginning, let's just go back for a second. What was the, the first three terms here? 10, 13, 16. So let's just write them down here. So we have 10, 10 13, 16, and then it carries on going. And we had a formula, which I'm going to write down here, Tn, and it was 3n plus 7. So that's a lot of the hard work that we've, we've done. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you another term. Um, and the term I'm going to give you is 60, no, 64. So I'm going to tell you that 64 is in fact in this <laughs> number pattern. I want to know which position is it in or which term is it? Which term is 64? So at the moment, you know it's a term, but you don't know its number. I want you to work out what is the term number for 64. Which term is it? Okay, over to you guys. I want to see if you can get this. And once you've got it, I want you to put your answer in the chat. While you do that, Lebo, is there anything that I need to know about from the chat? Um, not at the moment, Mr. Yes. Okay. Okay, let's... Okay, so there are some answers coming in. Let's see if people agree. The first step I would do is I'd write the formula out and then I would put my number... Okay, 64. And now I need to solve for n. And I'm going to take away 7 from both sides. If I do that, I'm going to end up with a 3n on this side and a 57 on this side. And then I have to divide both sides by 3. And n is 19. And what that is telling me is that term 19 is equal to 64. Now, let me see if people have agreed with me in the chat. 19 is the magic number. And you're right, Ayanda, you can check that I'm right by putting it back into the original formula. So 3 times 19 plus 7 is 64. Okay, so T19 says, I think we need to do another one of these. So I'm going to ask you what term number, which term is, um, I want you to work out 154. So I'm telling you 154 is in this number pattern, and I want you to work out which number is it. Which, which, what, uh, which term, what's, what's its position rather now? Yeah. I think you get what I'm asking. I'm asking you, what term is it? Which term is 154? Oh, Fuchira, you, you're on fire here. You're going a bit fast for me now. I haven't even had a chance to. <laughs> Let's see. What do we need to do? So I'm going to write down my formula. And then I put 154. I take away, the nice thing is it's feeling a bit predictable. So I take away seven from both sides and I get 147 equals 3n. And then I divide both sides by three. And I think what we're going to get is we're going to get 49. And so what we say is that 
T154 is the, is the term, it's the 49th term in the list. So if we count it out, I mean, it would take a long time. And this is why I'm teaching you the magic of this formula. If you counted out this 49 times, you would get to that. Okay, one more question before we have our break. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, okay. I want to ask you, what value is, what, sorry, what position is the number 20 in our number pattern? What position is 20? Oh. Okay, so if you look at the very, if you look at all the working we've been doing so far, if I say to you, what's the, what's position, the position of the number 20? Okay, if I could ask you to put yourselves on mute, guys, is someone with an echo? If I ask you 20, what position is 20 in this list? Faith, you right to not understand. I'm being a bit sneaky here. Does anybody know why I'm asking you about 20? Say to you, you're confused for a good reason. Why is 20 a strange thing to ask? Oh, Kanyasile no, knows where I'm going. So I want to suggest, if you look at the number pattern, if I go 19 and then I go to 22, isn't 20 between these two? And so the short answer is 20 is not in this number pattern. I was being a sneaky teacher. I was trying to show you that I can sometimes ask you something which isn't in the number pattern. So this 20 is not in, it falls between this. But what I want to show you is that the, what happens if I use the formula for this question? So you may say to me, okay, cool. That works fine when I can see it. But what happens if the number was really big? So let's use the method to do the following. If I say 20 equals 3n plus 7, what is going to happen if I try and work with that? And this is really important. So take away 7 from both sides, and I get 13 equals 3n. And then... If I divide both sides by 3, n is going to be equal to 4, 3, 3, 3 recurring. Now, what I want to point out is something really important. If you are solving for n and you get a number which has a fraction, it means that that, that value an idea that I want to point out is if I give you a number and you put it into the formula and you solve for n and you get a number that has a fraction, what that means is that that number that I gave you is not in the number pattern. If you solve for n and you get a whole number, then that number is the position in the list. Okay, so I want you to just take a moment to think about that. And then I want you to, if you, if you feel like you understand what I'm saying here, give a thumbs up. If you don't understand, give a thumbs down. All I'm trying to show you is that if you solve for N and N has a fraction, it's not in the list. If, if N is a whole number, it means it's the position in the list. Okay. So we need a bit more practice on this. Um, the main thing I want to kind of as we come to the uh, end of the first half of this lesson is, okay, so we'll come back in the second half and we'll look at this a bit more, is that we can use a formula um, to help us work things out about number patterns. And, and so we need to practice working with these, these formulas. Okay, let's take a break, guys. So what I want is for everybody to put their um, pens down and I want you to stand up. And so what we are going to do is we are going to do a little brain break. Now, if you're new to this environment, what we do halfway through the lesson is we stop and we do something a little bit different where we use our bodies to try and let our brains have a break because it can be quite tiring doing mathematics. 
And today I'm going to ask Lebo to help us if Lebo is still with us. Um, you are Lebo, you're with us, okay? And He's so saying, Lebo yeah. is going to guide us through this and I am going to try my best to act it out. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, I, yeah, I might fall over, but let's try and do this. And so we're going to try and do this together. I want to see everybody standing up. Um, so I see lots of you still sitting down. I want you to stand up and just give yourself a break. Okay. And Lebo, what do you have in store for us? Okay, guys. So today's brain break. If you're right-handed, hold on to your right, um, right foot with your right hand. So behind you, hold on to your right leg. Okay. And if you're left-handed then hold on onto your left leg. So you must stand on the, the leg that's weaker. Yeah. That's and then always. with the, yeah. And then with the other hand, hold on to your ear and freeze. So don't wobble, don't move around, don't hop around, just try and freeze. Oh, wow. This is really good. <laughs> oh, just... Ayanda can't do it because... Um, yeah. of the broken foot you don't have to do it okay <laughs> i'm getting tired who can do it i can see some people doing it but it's hard to stay still i'll, I'll try one more time oh yeah you definitely wobble a lot okay wait let me get all right it is difficult but um i think that <laughs> it is a um it's a really good exercise to do to just get your brain kind of away from the mats for a second. I like that one. Lebo, I think we'll do it again <laughs> in the future. Um, did you guys give us a thumbs up if you like that one? Give us a thumbs down if you're like, no, that is not for me. <laughs> <laughs> Meredith said it was easy. I think if you're, yeah, I think I've, <laughs> depends how good your balance is. <laughs> yeah no i enjoyed that level lot let, let, let's keep going with those um those ones those are great <laughs> we're all trying to get a feel for this um kind of number pattern formula thing so let's go back to a more typical question which is where you find the formula once you found the formula I'll then start to play with some of the ideas a little too soon to play with them, but we'll see how it goes. So here is a type of question from lesson one and two. And what's different here is that you're given a sequence. And what I want you to do now is I want you to build your own formula using what you've learned in previous lessons. And then I want you to work out the seventh uh, term number seven of the sequence, term number 10, and then uh, term 100. But first of all, you need to build the formula. If people are stuck, I will give you more hints. But for now, I'd like everyone to try and do that. And then if you're very good at that one, you can do the next one over here. Okay, and then I'll take some questions while everybody is working on these two questions. We have okay. a question from Kamuhelo, Mr. Ace. Kamuhelo, go ahead. Yeah. Um, Henry, you can unmute yourself. Oh, so? Yeah. Um, Hello. Hello. Uh, so I was going to ask a question uh, based on on, on the... Um, Previous thing. What do you call, so? Like, the, the, the sequence, so, but now I understand, so... Um, so you're glitching. Come again? Okay. I was saying, so I was going to ask the questions on how, like, how do you find the methods for the sequence? So, but now I understand, so. Okay. No, that's perfect. I mean, you, I will go over everything multiple times. So don't stress if you, if the first time, you need to do it, see it a couple of times. Okay, Kyle, what's your question? Okay, so.
Um, I don't think Kyle is connected um, to the audio on his computer, Mr. Ace. Okay. Let me just quickly get sure people are on the right track with this. So in the previous lessons, we learned how to build our formulas. And what we always looked for was the step size. The step size for this first sequence is going up in threes. And so I'm going to write three in front of the N. But I've got a problem because if I use this formula to generate my pattern now, term number one would just be three, which we know is not correct. And so that's why we use the constant term to balance things out. And so you should get a formula of 3n plus 2. Now, if you've got that formula, can you now work out for me what is term 7? What is term 10? What is term 100? That's what the question is asking. But I'll wait for some answers first. Mr. S, we have a question yeah. from Lebongo. Lebongo, go ahead. I wanted to ask from the previous um, example, okay. how do we get the seven? Uh, from the previous example, the previous example, I gave you the formula to start with. So there was no number. There's different ways that a number pattern can be given to you. In the question we're doing now, the bit in yellow shows you the numbers in a number pattern. But sometimes... A number pattern can be given to you as a formula. And so that's what happened in the previous question. I was doing something a bit different. So does that help you a little bit? Like you can get number patterns given to you in different ways. If you wanted to, you can, you can get the numbers from the formula by just putting in one for N and two for N and three for N. Okay, so I hope that helps a little bit. Are there other questions? Yes, there's a question from Muratehi. Go ahead. No, no, it, it, it's okay, sir. Are you feeling okay there? Okay. Yes, yes, yes. T7 is 23. Or at least according to my maths on the fly. Um, the good news about these questions is they start to feel quite repetitive after a while once you get the language and the symbols down. But you have to take the time to just practice. There's no shortcut. Um, yeah, any other questions? Yeah. Yes, Mr. S, there's a question from Irene. Go ahead, Irene. Irene, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. Okay, nothing there. There is another one from Lubongo. Okay. Again. Go ahead, Lubongo. Okay, um, Lubongo lowered the hand, so. So, I just want to see, the answers should be, um, 23 should be the seventh term, seven. and then 32 Three should be the seven. tenth, two and then the hundredth term should be 302. So, everybody should be moving on to this next question here. But if you have questions about how I got those, please do ask your questions now while everyone else moves on to these ones. Okay, I'll give a bit more time. Um, Mr. S? Yeah? Tumelo seems to not understand the second part, like where we add the number. Okay. So we're building my formula. Lebo, is that, so they, where are we building the formula? So I'm assuming, let's focus on the second question. Now we have a number pattern and the number pattern starts at three and then it goes to five and to seven and to nine. And what I wanna say is this pattern is going up in twos. What we say is the step size is two, or the constant difference is two. The way this pattern comes to life is through adding twos. And what we've realized through practicing this a couple of times is that whenever we have a pattern that has a constant amount being added or subtracted, we can start by writing down the step size next to the, the letter N, which is the position number. And we start there. 
but we're not always going to get lucky in the first step because sometimes we have to do some balancing. At the moment, my formula says the very first term will be two. Because if I put a one in for n, if I do this, two times, or t1 is equal to two times one. And that's just not true. The first term is not two, it's three. You can see it over here. So what I need to do is I add a constant term to balance and I go plus one. And as long as I'm dealing with a, a, a linear pattern or a pattern where there's a constant amount being added or subtracted, that formula will work. So now this formula can do a lot of the hard work for us. So um, that would be the rule part, which is A. But now you need to find the 28th term or what we call T28 using this formula. And that's what I wanna wait for some answers to come in. I see answers coming through. So since what this is saying is if I wrote out this list and I got to the 28th item, what would it be? Goodness, that would take a long time. So good news is I have a formula, a magic formula. And so I put a 28 where the N is. And then my plus one is there. And that would give me 56 plus one. And so the value would be 57. So the 28th term is going to be the value 57. So what I want to do now is I want to come back to that idea from earlier, which was still a little bit sneaky. And we're just going to focus our attention only on the example on the board now. And if I said to you, um, I'm going to give you a value in the number pattern. The value is 39. So I'm going to give you the value 39. And I want to know what term is 39 in this number pattern. So I'm making up my own question. We're going to call this question C. And tell me, I want you to work out what term is equal to 39 in this list. What's its position? What, so is it T7? Is it T25? I want you to try and work that out using what you see on the board. And while you do that, I'm going to take questions. Okay. Um, how did I get to 57? Okay. So in the question, the question says the following. It says, determine the 28th term of the sequence. So I'm given the 28. Now I've got a formula that I've built over here. And so you'll see where there's an N, there's now going to be, there's an N, there's an N. I put 28 in there and I put 28 in here. The formula says two times 28 plus one, and that's how I get 57. Okay, so there's a couple of different answers coming through for C. And I want to give a bit more time for this. Mr. S? Yeah, Are you able to take a question? There's a question yeah. from Lubongo. Go ahead, Lubongo. Why are we plusing B with the one? Okay, so at the very beginning, we built the formula. So the plus one is so that the formula actually matches. And what I would suggest is we did, I think lesson number two, we spent a lot of time on lesson number one as well on this. We, there's the first step is building the formula. The plus one comes so that the T1, if we just left it like this, term number one would be equal to two. But the problem is term number one is actually equal to three. And so the plus one is just so that my formula actually makes sense, is the honest truth. Okay, so let's try and work with the 59 now. In earlier in the lesson, what we did was we took the value 39 and we put it into the formula. And we got this, the formula that we built at the beginning. Now I need to solve for this thing called N. So what do I do? I take away one from both sides. And I get that. Then if I divide both sides by two, what do I get? 
I should get that. And so 19 is n. So what this means is that 39 is the 19th term in this list. If I carried on this green bit up 19 times, I'd get to 59. Okay, there's no, there's no remainder in this case. All right, let's just do one more type of question today, and then we'll, we'll go from, from that point onwards. Let's finish with this. Okay, so this is going to be the last. I will take, for those who don't understand, I will take additional questions, but I want to try and finish with this table. And in order to work out the missing terms, you are going to have to build your own um, formula to help you. So I'm going to do the first one, and then you are going to go from there. So my number pattern in this case is written in a different form. But if you think about position one, two, and three, this is just the pattern four, seven, 10, you know, and I can go on 13. And if I wanted the next term, I could keep going. So this pattern is going up in threes. Now, in order to work out what, what this thing is saying is, I want to know what T10 is or the 10th, the item in the 10th position. And I want to know what T54 is. But in order to get that, I need to build a formula for my number pattern. And so what I'm going to do, for those who are struggling, what is the step size? In this case, the step size is three. So I start by writing Tn equals 3n. But if I stop there, I'm telling a lie. Because the first term is not three, the first term is four. So what do I need to do? I need to add one. Now, for all of those who were struggling before with where the plus one was coming from, can you see how I need the plus one to get to four? Okay, and then in order to work out what the 10th term is, I go three times 10 plus one, which is 31. And then to get 54, it's the same sort of idea. Okay, in fact, you know what, guys? I'm actually going to ask you to take a screenshot because time is running a bit short. But I'd like for everybody, or in fact, you can leave this up on the board. I'm going to leave in a minute or two. But I want you to try and finish today by finishing these questions. And then I'll put them up. We'll start the next lesson by looking at these, um, these questions. Uh, Lebo, is there anything from your side? I did want to do a quick poll with the students. Um, can I ask you to do the poll with the students, which asks them what content they've covered so far this year at school? Um, it says grade okay. eight content done that far. If you could just do that in the, yes. basically let them finish off on this, these questions, and then also to fill out the poll and then put the poll um, information in the, in the Slack channel. Okay, we'll do mistakes. Um, I'll still stay on for two more minutes I, to answer some more questions okay. before I, I go. So um, there are some questions here. So um, let me, let me just work out the answer for T54. So T54, I'm going to put a 54 where the N is. And then I get that. So put 31 there. And then here I have 163 because this is 163. And so I'm just showing you a different way of representing um, patterns. Oh, did I get, yo, don't forget the plus one for Chira, because you go three times 54 plus one. Sir, please zoom in, I can't see, say. Which, where must I zoom in on? The one you're doing now, sir. Uh, okay. How's that? Thank you, sir. Pleasure, man. 
Okay, and then if you could just um, fill out the poll because we want to get a feel for if we do some extra exam preparation sessions, what content have students covered this year and which content have they not? Um, it'll help us do our planning for the rest of the term. So Koketsu, don't forget the plus one, huh? So uh, it's three times 54, but you've got a plus one in your formula. And so the plus one makes it 163. So yeah. I put the answers for, for my example up, but I want you to finish off with doing these question two and three. And then the next lesson, I'll start by just giving you the answers to them. Tumelo, are you done? Do you want to put your answers in the chat? <laughs> Mr. S, okay. have you run out of time to take questions? Because I see there's I a lot of I do have to pop across up. to the grade 11s now. Um, I will, at the beginning of the next lesson, what I'll also do is in, we come online at 5-2. I'll also take a few questions at the beginning of the lesson, if that's helpful. Um, but I think we've done quite a lot today. 